chapter that I read to you, that you read as well. Yeah. Nahash came after them and surrounded the city of Jabesh Gilead. Yeah. And the first persons you hear say anything were the men of Jabesh mm -hmm. to Nahash. Make a covenant with us yeah. and we will serve you. When we are in right standing with God, we don't have to make deals with the devil. Nahash's name means snake. So why are God's children going to make a covenant with a snake? You can't trust a snake. Why people have snakes for pets? I just don't understand. A dog will bark. A cat will be out and rub up against you, but a snake will choke you in your sleep. And they name them. <laughs> They'll bite you and suck the life out of you. But here's this snake coming after God's people, and the men of, um, of, of Jabesh says, Come on, make a covenant. They ain't want to lose their right eyes, I'm sure. But um, he said, Well, that was his, 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 his part of the covenant. Yeah, um, I'll, save, I'll spare your lives if you um, let me put out your right eye. Now, in reading, it said that in war, the man's eyes were uh, critical in war, in central, because you got to have vision, peripheral vision, front vision. You got to have eyes behind your head at times, because you never know when the enemy is coming up. And the enemy can be so relenting that it takes more than one man's eyes to win a battle. But you want to tell me that they're going to consent to having their right eye plucked out. And it said that it was something that they would do to humiliate. All right, if you don't have both eyes, you could still be a slave. And they did some of that to our forefathers, branded them, um, and did atrocious things to them. But to lose your right eye and to have a whole tribe of you walking around, all of them with one eye, left eye. Didn't that the person left eye low? Left eye? Yeah, but who, who what? Huh? It's, mm, oh, you know that. Who? <laughs> who in their right mind would give up a right eye? But we do it. We do it. So he says, um, the, the saving grace here. Look at verse 3. It says, the elders, hear the elders speaking up. Have a place. Save the day. Say, give us seven days. Give us seven days grace. And, and we're going to send out to our brothers in Israel. Remember, they're across the river now. And we're going to send out to them for help. And if they don't come in seven days, you can do whatever you want with us. But they, don't, they underestimated the power of God. Hallelujah. And somebody has some faith. We're going to make it if somebody keeps some faith, Brother John. The elder spoke up. So... They sent messages going on down. They sent messages, got to Saul's town. That's another thing that dumb Nahash didn't understand or probably hadn't heard that there was a king in Israel. He probably looked it up like that motley crew that came over across the, the Jordan into Jericho, even though they, they fit the battle of Jericho, but they still didn't look like warriors. We don't look like what we are, saints. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors, but we don't look like it. We are undefeated, but we talk a whole lot of defeated talk. Hallelujah. So he probably underestimated them. So they'll never get together in time. And I'm still going to have my way with Jabesh Gilead. And, I won't even say. And then he sent the messages. People heard it and started weeping. And that showed compassion because... Those people in Gibeah were not living in Jabesh. It's, it's kind of okay when stuff is happening in your house. And I can cry with you because it's not happening in my house. But these people were compassionate enough, and I don't know, maybe they thought by the time he finished with Jabesh Gilead, he's coming at us too. This enemy is relentless. So he says, oh, here comes Saul. So Saul was newly appointed, anointed king. And what is Saul doing? Just like our pastor, working. A working king, a working pastor. He's out there with the herds, but he comes out of the field, still helping in the family business, but he is king. And this is the first uh, challenge. This is the first national crisis since Saul becomes king. 
So he heard the people crying and he inquired, why are there all these people crying? When they told him about the right eye situation, anger, the first to said, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And then anger, he got angry. Saints, we need to get angry. We need to get angry over our city. Hallelujah. Because there's some Nahashes out there. Hallelujah. They want to destroy this city. want to destroy, hallelujah, apostolic faith. They want to destroy what God has put his name on. His name is in Jesus. And he doesn't want us to even say Jesus. But Saul got angry. The scripture says be angry and sin not. But it didn't say be angry and don't fast and don't pray and don't call them demons out. Call it by his name. The demons got to go. Yes, Lord. So he is Saul. Hallelujah. And the spirit of the God, spirit of God led him. Because this is the same Saul that went hiding when they wanted to anoint him. What kind of king goes into hiding? Hallelujah. When it's time for him to take the throne. But he stepped up this day. And he said, he took the oxen single-handed. This is Saul. Took the oxen that he was working with. Oxen, two yoked together. And he cut them in pieces. And he told messengers, take these two everywhere in Israel. So I equated that to a draft notice. Some messengers show up on your door with an uh, ox ear and still dripping with blood. That meant business. And he said, what you call it? Conscription. He created and he mustered up an army. Hallelujah. And we can talk about Saul and all the bad things he did, but I am so impressed with Saul in this 11th chapter of, of 1 Samuel. And he got, he sent the word out. And then the men started, the fear of God, the spirit of God fell on Saul. The fear of God fell, fell on the people. The spirit of God always fallen on our pastor. But do we catch the fear of God to carry out what she wants us to do? We drag our feet. We come when we want to. The Holy Ghost come rushing in. That's the only one I know come rushing in. Hallelujah. And why can't we do what we've been told to do? Them people came. Israel sent 300,000 men. Judah sent 30,000 men. And when you get down into it, he said, um, send this message back. I think I'm at the right one. He said, um, where am I? He said, he numbered the children. And then in number nine, yes, he said, send this message back to the, to the men of Jabesh Gilead tomorrow. By the time the sun be hot, I equate that to noon. So tomorrow around 12, when the sun is very hot, all right, you shall have help. The message out of there is help is on the way. You might be going through some horrible things right now. The enemy wants to thrust out your right eye. He don't care if you come to church. He don't care if you maybe listen to the word on TV. He don't care if you look like it. But if it's not the whole package, we're living beneath our privilege. Who wants to go around with one eye missing if you can have both of them? So he said, and the messengers came and told them, and they were glad, and they told um, Nahash, um, we'll come out to you tomorrow, and you shall do with us that seemeth good. And that, that, that gave me a message, too, that sometimes we talk too much. They got that message that help was on the way, but they didn't tell their enemy. Sometimes we tell secrets we shouldn't even tell. It's like sleeping with the enemy. So we need to cut it off and, 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 and make our words short. And he, that's what they said. They ain't tell them all that, that Saul told them. Saul divided that company, that, that group of men into three companies. And they came in the midst of the host in the morning watch. Told the enemy and told Jabesh we were coming at noon. They came early. He's our on-time God. 
Yes, he is. And sometimes he comes early. Hallelujah. And we don't recognize him because we wait for him to come at noon. But when he come in the morning, he said, get up, get up, get up, get up. I'm here. Get up and pray. Get up and worship. Get up and read your Bible. I'm here knocking on the door. We say, behold, he's knocking at the door. We thinking about sinners. He's knocking at our door too. But we say, Lord, I thought you was coming at noon. And we go back to sleep. But he told them in essence, I'm coming and you be ready. Like the virgins. You know, that story wasn't put in the Bible just to entertain us. We got to be ready. So he got there probably like four hours early. And Nahash and his people were probably still sleeping late, you know, because they didn't expect anything. And what I heard, what I, I read is that it was a 60 mile walk or trip from where Saul was to get to where the battle was going to be. And they had to do it overnight. They didn't have any horses. These were all footmen. And when you're footmen, you still got to be ready to fight when you get there. So they got there and they took the city or they took the, the, um, the enemy by surprise. Isn't it good? Don't you feel good when there's a surprise, an element of surprise? And it doesn't always have to be negative. You know, you love to surprise your, 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 um, your, your family members. You love to surprise your children. But when God gets the upper hand on the enemy, he don't even see it coming. And it's working out for your favor. It's a wonderful thing. So they got there and he divided into three companies and three companies pounced on them and tore, just slew them. And I don't know how many was in Nahash's company, but the end scripture says, by the time Saul and his 330,000 soldiers got finished with them, it wasn't two of them that could walk together. It wasn't two of them that could encourage each other to say, get back in the fight. That's how confused, that's how confused the enemy will be. Hallelujah. When God fights, we are not defeated. We are more than victorious. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So I went back. I know we're being tried and several people, even myself, have been tried this year, last year in their vision. And, and I went back to see, I said, what, are you, what is it about the eyes that the enemy wants to attack the saints with? Hallelujah. And the scriptures kept coming. There's so many scriptures. Half of Jesus' miracles were done in, in, in the blind receiving their sight again. I, don't, I don't, shouldn't say half. I want to be accurate. But so many of them. Yeah. And the enemy is after the vision. He said, if there is no vision, the people perish. Do you want to perish? Hallelujah. We got to have our sight. It's, and, and, and the scripture says, and the scripture came to me, we walk by faith and not by sight. But God still wants us to see something. We're not groping in this thing blindly. It's been laid out. I can go back a couple generations where those saints taught us how to travail. How to plead the blood. Not to give in. Not to go back. Hallelujah. They finished till they died. Hallelujah. They died in the faith. More recently than what's here. You might say these are stories and I can't believe them. I can point out. Point them out. Hallelujah. Hall of Faithers. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. That he put right in front of our face. That we can make this thing. Make this journey. Hallelujah. But the enemy is after our eyes. The enemy is after our vision. We see that so I can see so much. And half of us don't believe it because we ain't seeing nothing. It's a pitiful person that go through life and can't see no good. That's a sorry friend. Hallelujah. Job has some sorry friends. God, hallelujah. But God has to show you one good. Hallelujah. This thing, one thing have I desired. It's a good thing to have a faith tabernacle. If you can't thank God for nothing else. The enemy is after your vision. The enemy is after your eyes. A man that can't see will grope in the darkness. Sure his other senses will kick in at, at some point. 
But until they do, you're still blind and stumbling and, and 